Uh, the purpose of leadership is to get results. Teams produce results. So therefore, leadership should be evaluated and measured by the performance and culture of your team. Okay? The higher up the ladder you go, it's not about you winning, it's about your team winning. So all those concepts are there. But if I look at the strategic business plans, because that's what I do a lot of my work with companies, uh, very rare do we see in the strategic business plan that the organisation wants to have high-performing teams. They might have a balanced scorecard with people, it'll say employee engagement, good health and safety, uh, low turnover of staff, good training and development. It will not say that people work in high-performing teams. And yet high-performing teams, assessments have been out there. For example, Patrick Lencioni, uh, and we're going to show you our brand new model shortly. But I think it is so important that the amount of effort is way lower in, in terms of it being an issue. So we've got there a, a picture of a high-performing team. I found that one on the weekend when I was playing around trying to get something that looked really cool. Uh, so there are two types of teams. There are teams that are interdependent and teams that are not interdependent. So think of that one up there. Is that an inter interdependent team? Uh, what about an operating theatre? Tomas is going in for a small operation. It's an interdependent team. A group of national sales managers, uh, state sales managers, that report locally but get together once a year for a conference. There's no shared goals. It's, it's sharing information. So that's an important distinction you have to make when you're looking at a team. Is it truly an independent team that, that can have shared goals or is it just a group of meetings and so on? All right, this is Patrick Lencioni. Who's familiar with Patrick Lencioni's work? Look, I'm a great fan of Patrick Lencioni. I've used it a lot. Uh, Jamie and I have introduced these five concepts and, and we'll quickly get people to do a whiteboard desktop assessment. But remember, it was written as a fable. Does that make sense? Anyone remember it's a fable? It was written about a female CEO that went into a company that was sick and she used these concepts. Um, so we look at how much trust is there in a team. Is the team having difficult conversations and engaging in professional conflict? Do they uh, have timely decision making and effective meetings? Accountability for performance and behaviour by the boss and by peers? And are they in fact an intact team with shared goals and big picture? For those who want to know, 65% of teams pour scorely on accountability. It's like that challenge poor performance that came up in the good manager's table. Remember that one? So it's a big issue. 40% of teams lack trust. So I'm just showing you that teams can often go wrong, yes? Even when you get a good team, someone leaves, someone goes, and all of a sudden you might be dysfunctional again. Uh, now, my own view is that Lencioni doesn't have enough around culture in there and about the business side of performance. So you'll see in a moment when I introduce our new model, we've taken that, I think, the extra step. Bob Hogan, we love Bob Hogan, he's a legend, and he got together with one of his colleagues in, in America, Gordon Kirby. They wrote this book called The Rocket Model, and The Rocket Model is a metaphor for having high-performing teams. All right, so I really like the work that Kirby and Hogan did, and we then decided to build on it, and uh, Jamie and I did all the IP, uh, about 18 months ago, and it's now a new product that's available. Uh, what you do is if you take a management team, those managers can be invited to go online and answer a range of questions from high to low uh, that live in these little clusters or families. Jamie and I will then take that report back to the team as part of anything else that we're doing, and they get a line, so we can tell you whether it's a great team or an average team or a poor team. Um, and uh, it's not so much the score Every time we've done it, it's the conversation that then comes out. What do we need to do? Yeah, we've got to get our planning cycle right. Yeah, we, we, we don't hold people accountable. We need to be more resilient. We've been freaking out lately. So we always find it's the conversation. You know what you end up with? Four or five action points to improve that team. Then we say, let's do the assessment again in six months' time to keep us on track. So what our uh, little document does, we measure performance, as in, is there clearly defined strategy? Is innovation encouraged? Are there strong levels of accountability? Uh, what are we like at leading change and going forward? Uh, what are we like at producing results? And then we measure the culture of a team. Does that make sense? What's the culture or behavioural norms in that team? How much trust is there? Do they engage in professional conflict? They go hard on the issues but soft on the people. Meeting effectiveness and making decisions. Emotional intelligence. For the first time ever, in looking at teams and team templates, we've introduced the, the question of the EQ of the team. Do you think that's important? The level of emotional intelligence within a team. And then resilience. And we use the Selman book, Executive Stamina, 
If you want more information from PBC, we're the Australian distributor. It simply says uh, that for you to maintain your executive stamina at work and be a high performer, you need to do recovery. Recovery is anything to do with rest and renewal, relaxation, recharging, so you can go back to being the high performer. It's taken from sport, yes? What do high performing teams and individuals do after a big game? Recover. Rehydrate, physio, all of that. The book is by the Selmans, Joshua and Martin Selman, called Executive Stamina. And uh, we can make copies available to you if anyone wants to talk about that. So, the Selmans took the principle from sport and said, let's put it into teams. We want teams to be resilient teams. Okay, so, yes? You have a strategy and innovation to have results. Isn't there a step in between how you get to it? Yeah, execution. What are you thinking? Yep. So we're actually identifying, do you have a strategic planning cycle? Do you have a longer horizon, three, five years, a one-year plan? Is it a balanced scorecard? And that one's driving fresh ideas and thinking, looking for new products and services. And down here, it's, it's about your numbers. How are you tracking on your numbers? Now, if you open up your kit, we have an example of a high-performing team. It's the high-performing team assessment. It's on the right-hand side. We have a copy, and this was a copy of a report that I did in Adelaide last week for a client, and it's the best result we've seen in the six months that we've been using this report. So has everybody got a copy? So we turn the page, and this particular team is a senior team. There's a CEO and uh, 11 other key people in the group. They scored 78% of the points available. The Australian average is 69. That's the highest score we've seen, probably after having done 25 assessments just in the last six months. Okay, so we were thrilled to see that result. There were 12 respondents. Rich data, good data. So I turn the page. Uh, now, the team score is the highest score, and we rate the items going from top to bottom, and then you've got the Australian average. So the best thing about this company, they have a robust planning in cycle with quarterly reviews. How good is that? Very strong on the discipline of strategy and and reviews. Uh, two, they plan short term and longer term. Three, they've got a meeting cycle in place. And can you see statistically they're smashing the norms here, yes? Those benchmarking data. So these things are being done exceptionally well, really rigorously well. Four, they're looking at long term new opportunities. Five, the strategic priorities are defined and agreed. Six, they've got a reputation for high performance. That one comes from their national organisation and they're consistently number one amongst the states. So that was good too. Um, uh, seven, there's a lot of individual trust within the group. Nine, there's a shared vision of what winning looks like. Ten, when they underperform, they challenge themselves to do better. Eleven, they consistently deliver very good results. Go across the page, what were their lower scores? But they were still mainly uh, ahead of the Australian averages. Team members take good care of self to avoid stress and burnout. So you get the first hint of what's going on, yes? They're really going hard, they're very strategic, there's a bit of burnout and stress creeping in. So they say, okay, time for the resilience program. Let, let me introduce you to the Selmans with the executive stamina. Uh, 49, team members assess social situations accurately by observing the interests, feelings and goals of others. That's what we call an SQ question or an EQ question, but if you take an SQ, reading social <coughs> situations, social awareness, being able to pick up on others, uh, and so on. So, very strong results. Can you see that? In, in particular, some of the fundamentals about how they're running their business. The next page, we simply give you that data uh, broken down. The items ran from 1 to 10, with 10 being high. So this is the group average. Now, if you look at that, it's a fairly consistent set of results, isn't it? They're doing particularly well on strategy and results. Pretty good on meeting effectiveness. Leading change, just a little bit low. So that creates a conversation. Can you see that? People start talking about it. It was all done online. It was confidential. And then we give you the results. We show you the items by the scales. And then go to page nine. We get the written text. Anything that's called PBC, we always go for written text just to give people that opportunity to talk. So two questions. What would improve the culture of the team? And what would improve the performance of the team? See those two distinctions again? and people can write as much as they want. 
This is a real one. I've de-identified the company's name, but this is totally a real report with all the comments there. And you can see how good they are because three or four people talk about, hey, it's hard to improve a great culture. We think we're doing really well. It feels good. So do you think these guys feel engaged? Do you think they're working in the business and on the business? You know, potentially creating good engagement with their teams? Now, um, that's the team report. And like I said, a management team will go online, answer those questions, and they could be doing Hogan's, they could be doing 360s, EQs. That's another assessment, yes? It's another assessment which just keeps them talking, reflecting on their strengths and opportunities. It goes really well with all the Hogan products, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment.